All right, welcome everyone. This is the September 2022 Complexity Weekend Facilitation Training. We're here with some facilitators, participants, and with Monica King. We're going to go our way through a Jamboard together that will first discuss participation in the September 2022 cohort in terms of what it looks like and maybe some questions that people are having or surfacing about that. And then, especially in the second half, we will look forward to showing and telling facilitation with Monica, bringing a lot of points in. I'll share the Jamboard on my screen so you can see it. Okay. Um, and Jamboard on the left side are some tools that you can play with and add and adding post-it notes and so on. And you can advance with the left and the right arrows or drop down to click on the slide. So on we go. And feel free to raise your hands in Gather if you want to ask anything just at any time. So first, your organizers for this cohort are Carolina and I, and we're also both facilitators. We're there to coordinate activities and make it clear how to facilitate and how to participate. The ways to get in contact with us, if you have any questions at all, are to email complexityweekend at gmail.com, to join any pre-weekend synchronous activity at all. Um, it can be any kind. Um, as well as an anonymous feedback form that you'll see in the documents that we'll look at soon. And we're there for you to just support your participation from slightly afar. But when we... <laughs> Greetings, John. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, um, we are just beginning this session, which is recorded where we're um, giving an overview and I'll paste in the um, Jamboard link into the nearby chat and we'll just continue um your facilitators are there's about 20 of them and they're coming from just an amazing diversity of backgrounds and locations many of them have been participants and facilitators and co-organizers in the past facilitators are going to have one or more interactive session that they catalyze over the weekend itself so during september 23 to 25 and those are not going to be lectures or seminars those are going to be like interactive experiences that they're going to co-create with all the participants and also the facilitators to, to different extents are going to be just like broadly available during the weekend and participating in different ways and they're also like very often open to uh have you connect with them especially if you're direction or your team's work is relevant for something that they might be able to inform on. And this is kind of a special training for us at CW because Monica and Innovators Box has always supported our facilitators and helped them step into a participatory way of being in this community. And then for this cohort, we wanted to also widen that to make sure that the session was available for any participant and then also that the recording would be as well to encourage peer facilitation as a value, which I know we'll be able to come back to, but just to kind of continue through. Um, there's really one key document that you'll want to bookmark, and that's the Participant Single Source of Truth, or PSSOT. And this is going to have information on every aspect of participation. So here it is. And the, the page that you land on is going to be an overview and it includes exactly how you participate before, during, and after the weekend. Right now we're in the pre-weekend. So you can click on that pre-weekend program link or find it in the sidebar and you'll find synchronous activities that you can join and here's their view. They're all at different times. So hopefully one works for you or if there's a type that you're excited about, but it's not in a time that works for you, then just suggest it and we can try to accommodate. And you can either join synchronous activities or you also might wanna check out the facilitator introduction videos in this playlist 
which is where this video is going to be. And also there's facilitators saying hello and some other informative videos. And then in the weekend program tab, you'll see the um, evolving and updating weekend program, which will be increasingly set and locked in closer to the weekend. But already you can see a lot of the uh, exciting facilitated sessions and there will be continuous activity from 17 UTC on September 23rd all the way on through um, 22 UTC on the 25th. So no one will be awake that long. No one will be participating or hopefully at their screen that long, but we design the sessions and the program that way so that whatever availability you have and whatever time zone you're in, you'll be able to find sessions and connect with other participants. Even if it's morning for one person and night for someone else, it's always fun. And that's part of what's great about joining the cohort. Um, so you can also just be um, seeing the overview here during the pre-weekend. You can join the pre-weekend events that were on the page we just looked at. You can watch the introduction videos and you can chill and plan to participate just by setting times um, in your own availability. And then during the weekend, you can join synchronous activities as works for you. You can connect with other participants on Keybase, the optional chat platform, or however you connect with them and also balance your day for healthy and quality attention. Sean? Uh, that was a great overview. I think uh, just one thing that'd be nice to, to kind of pinpoint on the program is that the facilitated live sessions are going to be different than most other you know, conference-like gatherings. It's going to be a lot less broadcasting information and like a lecture hall kind of idea. It's going to be much more about interactions and catalyzing interactions. And that's kind of getting to the root of what the facilitator's role really is in Complexity Weekend. And it's just catalyzing that type of interaction amongst participants, uh, for participants to form teams together, or to have a kind of a, a, a solo learning route if that's the, their mode of participation that they like to engage with. And just really being that, uh, that catalyst either as a participant themselves on a team as an individual, or just by creating structures, um, synchronous or asynchronous that allow uh, for that type of interaction to be catalyzed. Yeah, great, thank you. And the other notes is the opening live stream, the middle live stream, and the closing live stream where some teams will give a short presentation. Those three live streams are like our kind of bookmarks in the book, or at least of this chapter. They're rewatchable because again, no one will be awake or probably watching all of them. And they're just like a good tip of the iceberg that becomes publicly viewable. And then everything in between is gonna be in this gather space that we're in right now. It's in all the calendar events and they're all in the same uh, URL. And then the other event type other than the facilitated sessions are the flexible time for open mingling and team co-working as well as facilitators being around. And then something new that we're exploring in this September cohort is a team's fair that'll be on 15 UTC on the 24th. And that's some of the development of the teams committee at CW. And so that will be a great place for anyone who wants to one, be on a team or start a team that they're excited about. And then two, once they're on a team, give the team some direction and make sure that they feel like a valuable and included participant on the team. And that's what we'll be um, exploring together in that team's fair. So that's the weekend participation. Um, just to give another view on it. The ways we're gonna communicate are synchronously in gather, through email asynchronously, and then optionally for people who have the Keybase chat platform, which is free. And if you have just installed it, just send us an email with your username, we'll add you right in. But optionally for people who want to join this Keybase team. Um, the tools that we're using are gather for video chat, email and calendars to stay coordinated and the CODA single source of truth that we've been looking at. And then the timeline is before September 23rd is the pre-weekend, then the weekend itself. And then after the weekend, we continue on in community together. 
That is much of the overview, and now we can move into this next section. So, Monica, please. Thank you. And again, for those who might have questions, feel free to raise and bring them up. Uh, I know initially the first time I hear any of this, it feels like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of information. Just note that first, it's a recording. You can go back anytime. And number two, this is the reason why some of the faces that you saw, that's why they're there. They're there so that way you don't have to feel alone. Ask the questions, reach out to make this journey as fun and intentional. And so it's not, we're not going to quiz you on remembering everything. So just reach out the key places, knowing where to ask questions so that way you feel at ease. And so welcome to the community and so excited you're here and look forward to having you in every capacity that you plan on being part of. So when it comes to facilitation, the number one thing I love asking is this question, what does it mean to facilitate versus speak? And it seemed to be something that I think uh, feels, of course, there's a reason why we have two English words, right? Completely two different words supposed to mean something different. And yet when we think about it in action, we don't really see a lot of people demonstrating what those two things mean differently. Uh, so I'm curious for those who are here, if you can take a moment to share in the Jamboard, if you're able to join or put in the chat, like what comes up for you when you think about, you know, what it means to facilitate versus speak. Um, and while I see the Jamboard being populated with some notes, I welcome all of you, especially who's watching the recording, to take a moment to reflect. And maybe some scenarios could help, right? Maybe what's the what's a scenario where you felt like, oh my gosh, like when is this person going to stop talking? Versus like, for some reason, when this person engages or leads, it makes you just feel hurt. It just makes you feel like the room is safe to talk and makes you want to actually speak up and share. That's probably where whoever is leading or facilitating is help creating and making a difference. And so that kind of insight is key. And I'm, I have some friends here, so I'm going to actually check in on them to see their thoughts. Shirley, hi, good to see you. Would you be willing to share, you know, with your experience and expertise on experience on this? You know, what comes to mind when we think about this first question? What does it mean to facilitate versus speak? Yes, I was just writing a sticky note. Um, and what I was writing was the first thing I think about is listening. So when I'm part of a group and there's somebody who is the facilitator, you know, whatever that means to them, but they have that title or role. Um, yeah, I can experience a lot of different, um, or have a lot of different experiences, even though, you know, they're doing the same things, so, uh, theoretically, I guess. So in some, I might feel really listened to and heard um, versus just kind of sitting there or whatever, being present. So that's a really key one for me. There's this also this element of, of kind of different preferences and personalities, but I have a big thing about being heard, so. Thank you for sharing that, right? Being heard, being seen, um, active listening, all of that is key. And you're probably all listening as you're tuning into this right now, actively listening. I'm like, okay, Monica and Shirley, that sounds great. But like, what does that really mean in reality? And Sean, so I'm curious for you, like when we think about this virtual space where, you know, complexity weekend is happening, what are some additional insights and perspective that comes to mind for you that you found really crucial to create that heard space in active listening when you don't even see each other online in person? I mean, I think you, you definitely have to embrace the tools that we're in, right? So we're right now all in gather.town and that has its own unique set of affordances. You know, we can see our videos here. You can see our little avatars move around, you know, really take stock and get comfortable as a facilitator in that space and how uh, social interaction will occur within that space. And then once you kind of have a grasp or a sense of the different um, affordances available, then you can really kind of understand, okay, so, you know, when we're on this mat, everyone can hear each other. When we're split off into all these other mats, you know, people can't hear each other, but someone can go to the podium and broadcast to everyone. So how might I use that affordance to really keep everyone, you know, comfortable, you know, in a, in a safe environment, like they feel really comfortable to learn and open up, um, and but they know what's going on and they don't feel confused. So I, you know, I think, the, the key there would just be getting as comfortable as you can as early as you can with the tools and the affordances. And then you'll naturally have intuitive moments well, where you'll see people interacting, 
and uh, maybe they're not hearing each other or you know someone's you know being very quiet and not engaged you know how can i now leverage the affordances to really just kind of nudge the system and get everyone interacting or getting everyone uh, being heard absolutely you know when we're in person we think about how knowing where you're showing up right knowing what time the session starts those physical aspects play a role in how comfortable you feel opening up and wanting to share what is on your mind. And same thing virtually, right? Virtually, that means, as Sean has emphasized, you know, get, getting familiar with the tools. Maybe just, you know, giving yourself permission to know that if you feel a little awkward because you haven't used some of these platforms, to give yourself like, you know what, for the next five, 10 minutes, I'm just going to focus on feeling comfortable first before I share what's on my mind. That's great. That's a choice you make to lead to feel comfortable, and that's good. And part of that, what's going to be key and why we're opening this conversation, not just for facilitators, but for all of you as participants, is that these roles and everything that we're just talking about is something that we all bring into the picture, right? Just because somebody has a facilitator title in this event doesn't mean that they're the only person who's going to notice that, hey, I noticed that so-and-so is not speaking up. Can, let's check in to make sure when we're in this group conversation. Or it might be that you notice somebody who's struggling with and not sure how to click or unmute. Maybe it's just taking a moment to say, hey, do you need help? Can I help you with something? Or, you know, taking a moment to realize that, you know, that virus might be me, you know, yourself and say like, hey, I, I want to be able to share and kind of monitoring the room. So we're all co creating. And it goes back to then the core question I raised here. And I love the Jamboard being populated. I'm going to check in with Daniel in a little bit to see what patterns he's going to see here. But the reason why I love the question of what does it mean to facilitate versus speak is that a speaker you expect to speak in a lecture type of format, right? That's where we nerd out. We learn a lot of different things. But this is why it's important to differentiate with facilitate. When we are showing up whether as a participant or as a facilitator to facilitate, we're more of like a catalyst, an igniter, right? We're not just here to say what's on our mind and that's done. We want to bridge upon it. So I'm going to listen even more carefully about what Sean is saying, what Shirley's saying, what Daniel's saying, what all of you are saying, what Eric's saying, to think about how do I bridge the next conversation? I'm not just trying to make my case and make a stem and half. I looked cool, right? That's not what I'm trying to do. So it's so key to do it. And that's why the image that I have here is not a coincidence. When we facilitate and show up more as a facilitative thinker, we show up more as a conductor, really monitoring the room of the energy, trying to see, okay, I think we're getting heated up in this conversation. Is this really the core conversation decision we need to do for this project right now? Maybe taking a step back to say, hey guys, like I think we got a little uh, detour. Can, can we take a step back to go back to the main problem? That kind of mindset and that we can all bring together. Uh, Sean, did I see his hand up? Yeah, I think it's uh, just one thing to add there is, you know, something that makes Complexity Week a very unique experience is the diversity of perspectives. And so more than any other gathering of people, you're, it's going to be really hard for any one agent in the system to really broadcast a message that everyone aligns with. It goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all going to be disagreeing on how we see the world. And, and that just really fundamentally changes the way, you know, facilitation and kind of guidance of, of behavior and thought and, and interaction occurs in, in this type of event. It's much more like you're doing so expertly, Monica, right? Seeing if the hands raise, seeing these other modes that allow all these different diverse perspectives to kind of chip in and co-create something new and emergent together. That's really what we're always constantly doing at a Complexity Weekend event. And it's just like the fundamental skill that not only um, facilitators can learn over time, but every participant in those moments of facilitation of putting on a facilitator hat on a team, you know, interacting with other participants in a session where they can really learn that skill and, and, and just really empower Complexity Weekend to, to be more than the sum of the parts. Absolutely. It's a whole part of the experience. Uh, Daniel, what's coming up for you? You've been help monitoring our beautiful Jamboard. What's standing out to you as you look at this and hearing Shirley and Sean's point of view? One aspect is the Venn diagram with facilitation and speaking. It's not overlapping. There's ways to facilitate that aren't speaking. Silence being one of them. And also that facilitation is in one sense, seeing the engagement as something that's being moved towards or some meaning that's being developed together. Whereas in speaking, 
especially technical or domain specific or disciplinary, it can feel like the conclusion of speech is the end. Like that's where people clap and go home. But when we're engaging in relationships and teams, then eventually the meeting has to end, but also we kind of like have continuity. And so there's just a lot more of a relating that can be novel, but also it's very um, exciting and hopefully something that people can kind of pick up on and foster. I love that. And the key is that, right, for everyone that's going to be different, that's going to feel different, that's going to show up differently. And Eric, in fact, I'm curious for you, what's coming up for you as you think about this whole conversation and when you think about facilitation for you? Thanks. And thanks, Sean. <laughs> I wonder what Eric's thinking. He's awful quiet over there. Let's get something from the somebody who's not contributing. Um, I guess one of the things that, well, there's a subtext to a lot of this, and part of the role, perhaps, of the conductor, is about scene setting. And I think that's an important part of the process that you, in talking about, uh, I, the only one I put up there was enabling versus imparting. And I think part of the big part of enabling a facilitated session is being able to set enough of the scene, whether it be in terms of things that people make sure you, they bring to the, the environment, uh, activities and discussions and situations that you can craft and create to uh, give rise to the types of interactions and things that, that, can, that, that can take place. I mean, a lot of it is a complex space where we're trying different things and see what emerges. We through your experience and the like, we have an understanding of well, what works, what works well. Hey, but hey, there's always that moment of surprise. And how can we create a scene and, and certain things and be attuned to a bit of novelty and things arising that has been unexpected? Anyway, things I care about. Mm -hmm. No, Eric raises a really important point, which is actually the gem of Complexity Weekend. There is going to be tons of unexpected moments, right? Expect the unexpected is kind of the rule. And, you know, Eric highlights the key aspect of like what mindset are we walking into it when we face those, right? Coming from a facilitator mindset, we're being open to it, we're looking out for setting the scene, right? And this is part of the reason why I think when we now go to the second question, if we can kind of scroll to the next page, really raises an important part, which is because this community and this weekend experience is more than just like a one-time go back and forth. It's it's being even more intentional. And again, the emphasis of why the facilitative thinking and facilitator role is not just led by the facilitators who have the title during the session, but for all participants and everyone throughout. Um, and so building on that, Daniel, was there another point that you wanted to make that I saw your hand raise? I was thinking of the symphony as a complex system and about the scene setting and how the stage was prepared and, and it was that shaping of the scene, which maybe the conductor did, but perhaps not. That's a kind of environmental facilitation and all the work that the string section facilitator put in, in the time leading up to the concert. And so I, it's a, the complex system and the facilitation angles really harmonize because they help us like respect all those moving pieces that lead to a symphony or to a team or whatever other project people are going to work on. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I think that image is so important and meaningful. Um, and same also building on to the diversity. Uh, I know Sean has highlighted briefly, but just like in the symphony where we have a tons of instruments, the beautiful thing about Complexity Weekend is that we have a lot of different voices and perspectives of people coming in. And how representative is that of complexity in itself where we do want that complex thinking and perspective. And so take a moment again for those who are here live to share your thoughts about what does it mean to facilitate in a participatory community of practice like Complexity Weekend? And I'm going to pause check in this time with you know different people in different order to hear some of their 
thoughts as well. But for those who are, again, watching the recording, take a moment to reflect and, you know, feel free to pause and see what comes to mind for you and thinking about what are some, you know, thoughts and, you know, picture that you have. So let me give a second for everyone to reflect and put some thoughts. And again, if it helps, building on um, the last few comments, thinking about the image, what's the image that comes to mind and where you find peace? And so with that being said, let me check in with Sean first this time to see what is on his mind. What's coming up for you, Sean? Uh, I put a couple uh, embracing tensions and differences, right? Going back to the diversity point, like we're all not going to see the world the same way. So you, and and really the juiciness, you know, of Complexity Weekend is is the interfaces between all these different perspectives. So really just embracing and diving into the tensions, the differences and learning. That's like where the most learning really is if people are open to it and the respect is there and, you know, all these other tenants that really allow the value to flow from that. Um, and then I also put thought toward action. I see I'm uh, thinking alongside the same lines as other people um, where, you know, it's very easy, especially if you, you know, not everyone's an academic in Complexity Weekend, but it's, but there are a fair number. And, and, and one thing that a lot of people do, especially when you study complex systems, which has mostly been academic in the past, is to really intellectualize things and really want to thoroughly understand things, maybe even before making a move. Um, but what we like to encourage a lot of the time is for people to, to learn by doing or to learn by moving and really, um, always kind of uh, gearing, you know, what you're doing and whatever amazing thoughts and, and theories and models you're coming up with and gearing them toward action and really um, trying to identify, is there a problem here that get, can be resolved through a diverse team action, you know, really putting these theories to work? Like what, how might we maximize our learning by getting our hands dirty and tinkering in the system and, and unpacking complexity concepts into, into real world examples for a particular system in front of us? So I think those are two, I'll, I'll stop there. That, those are two that pop out in me right now. I'm going to plus one to what Sean shared and I'll also add to reframe this to in another way. It's like, I hope, I hope, I hope you walk away from this event and meet new friends that you never thought you'd meet in other industries. That's actually a simple another way of thinking about it. Hey, hey, like we're doing this in the sense of complexity weekend, but same for me. I would have probably not got to know some of the friends I have met through complexity weekend unless I showed up here. So be in for a treat. You know, often I think, especially during the pandemic, many of us have been reminded of how silo a lot of our industries and work has been. And of course, that's part of the reason why thinking differently innovating or, you know, exploring new perspectives has been a challenge. But how lucky we are, you know, as difficult this time has been, it has permitted us to merge and show up to new places like events like this, uh, where we get a chance to meet completely different people, different ways of thinking in different industries and in different parts of the world. Take advantage of that. Uh, it might not be maybe the person who you've spoken all weekend or just had that one conversation, or it might be somebody who you even had that very different opinion and you had to hash it out. And that's actually where you bridge a new insight. So you never know, but look out for it because that's part of where it is. It's not static. It's active. It's complex. And I think that's what the beauty of it is. Eric, what's coming up for you when you think about this theme? Did you, did you ask me? Sorry. Yes. Hard, was... hard of ear, but eerie. Um, yeah. So I was just looking through the different things that are on online, uh, on the different different post-its and the like. Um, there seems to be a, a, a space for, um, in addition to all these, uh, part of the role of the facilitator in the participatory community making sure the space is still safe and still inclusive while giving head to to people to be taking the lead while moving into action there's always that tension that risk of you, know, you want things to propel forward and move but does that threaten certain people or leaves other others outside or, or whatever anyway so that's that's uh, the, the other the other half of this that, that, mm. that would be here I love that, Eric. Thank you for raising that again, again, of the importance of psychological safety, 
creating a safe room. This goes back to, I was indeed curious next to, to check in with Shirley, but Shirley's first comment, in fact, when we talked about, you know, what makes it unique about being a facilitator was just feeling heard. Uh, and so Shirley, actually building on that wonderful insight with Eric and Sean as well, I'm curious for you, when you think about this question and then building on that safety online, what are things perhaps we could do better both as participants and facilitator to co-create that safe room together. Any advice that's coming up for you when you think about the past few events? Um, well, I had just added a sticky note about actively reducing barriers to participation. And I think that um, what's been mentioned so far is like silos. And I, I also add like gatekeeping kinds of things because People should be able to talk. All people should talk. Can talk about their experiences um, of, of complexity, and it's not that you have to have an advanced degree or know what this or that word means. You know, that's all artificial gatekeeping that really reduces diversity. Reduces, I think, or or kind of eh, not reduces, but kind of actively conflicts with innovation in some ways because wow I, I can't really add my two cents here but what if that you know a person's comment or hunch or, or personal experience could really push the dialogue forward so yeah that's something I feel like I really need to work on because uh, we all have our own experiences and uh, backgrounds um, and biases so I want to be better at that. Thank you for sharing this, Shirley, in such a humble way when I know you model and practice that so well as well. And just plus wanting that, you know, sometimes intention and action could misalign. I know some of us will say like, but Monica, it meant goodwill. Like I was, you know, as Eric shared a great example, right? Like we're trying to just push the agenda. We got to make sure, but doing it in a certain way that makes it feel inclusive and thoughtful, it might be in the word choice. It might be in the tone. It might be in the way, the body language. It might be in the expression. And so the tip to think about is catch yourself when you feel a little off. It might be that we're off. Uh, we have our gut instincts to feel if we're kind of overboarding or not. And so look out for that. And then also, if by chance you notice somebody else who might be getting too heated up and, you know, it's not needing some extra help, then maybe actually ask for help or kindly just pull aside and say, hey, like, I just want to have a chat. Like, what's what's really making you worried? Like, is there something that I can be of help? Um, the key word is also at times, I know I just used, maybe I should have used a different phrase, but sometimes using the word you could feel accusatory. So be mindful of the word choices, you know, maybe ask like, hey, would you like, is there anything that I could be of help? Is there anything that's uh, what's on top of mind for you? That could be a way of encouraging the other person to open up and say like, hey, you know what? Actually, I'm I'm a little frustrated because this button is not clicking. <laughs> like I wanted to submit this and get this report. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's on your mind. Look, you know what? It looks like it's the internet connection. Let me help you with that, right? Problem now solved. So assume good intention, look out for it. And we're all co-creating this space together. And I love, again, again, the opportunity is you can watch this anytime and also the Jamboard to see what other notes is resonating with you. But that being said, we got to remember that the part of the challenge and the opportunity I must emphasize is that this is all online. So as we go to the next page, part of the thing to note about all of this is like, well, how do we be even more intentional when it's online? Because it's one thing for, you know, going back to Shirley's comment on making people feel heard and inclusive to show up in that way when we are uh, in person, you know, I might be showing more, you know, people might be able to see the body language more visibly or give a pat on the back, you know, kind of like check in and say, hey, how you're doing? But it's a little different to do that virtually, right? I, I have to like literally walk over through Gatter. I'm like, knock, knock. Hey, how are you? And it, it could feel a little awkward at first, but there is magic to it. And I want to just emphasize that at the end of the day, the connectivity that we want is still the same. And so building on that, um, really, really key to think about what is something that you want to do. And hey, I know all of us have been doing this remotely for the past two years and more because of the pandemic. And we have humbled ourselves in how much more learning there is to do. So 
let some of those assumptions go. There might be things that are come easier and there might be things that maybe we can still learn to home. Um, so building on the Eric, what's coming up for you? What's something that you feel like online facilitation and participation is different versus in person that you feel is helpful to know, to feel more connected online? I guess I think one of the biggest differences has been a bigger importance on temperature taking at, at different junctures. In person, you can get a better sense of the room. You get you get a certain sense of the room. The bandwidth for getting a sense of the room is pretty broad. Online, that 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 sense is pretty small. So to dispel or to figure out a little bit more. Uh, getting getting that sense is important, and uh, you're pulling stuff or just setting stuff. Anyway, I'll leave it there. There's probably you probably have some useful techniques for getting it, taking a sense of the room online, and I have not come across many of those. Thank you for raising that, Eric. Right, getting a sense of the room is one of the variables that looks very very different online versus in person. Right, in person, I could I feel like I could get the energy in the room. You walk on stage, or you're in the meeting room, you feel the vibration. Right, like you feel the pumping up in the energy, and like, whoa, I just feel the energy in the room. Why we often say things like that when we attend events, and as a speaker and a facilitator, I truly you know miss those times. And I remember how awkward it was the first time I had to get on those like events and i'm like let's dive in and then i don't see anyone because <laughs> everyone's on like webinar format so i don't see any expression i don't even know if they're online i don't even know if they're even there um and you know that's kind of different so going back to se getting sense of the room is so key yet doing that online is different now this is where some of the platforms that we have here is going to be such an opportunity because gather as you are already seeing here we are here at gather and you can see videos and you can walk around the room so while it's not going to be 100 percent the same as uh being in person we actually get to create something completely unique virtually that we can get a sense of the room i can actually walk around i can stop by and say hi to eric shirley or sean or daniel or anyone else in the room and we can have a conversation we can even send notes actually in fact i can remember people's name better because i see it on the chat function which i couldn't do in person so there's a lot of opportunities online that looks different could be difficult but also an opportunity I'll share another thing that I feel I love now even more online is that in addition to the names, I can actually track back some of the notes. So I can sometimes have my notes right here and I can show up here so I feel fully present. Uh, and so part of the scene creating, I hope that as you're hearing this, is a reminder that as much as some of us say, like, I miss being in person, I feel like you can't replicate, that there's still something very unique and special that we can do something only online because it's online. Uh, and that includes also all of you participating because some of you would have not been possibly been able to join because of either the schedule, you know, the travel, the cost and all of that. So I'm super grateful and excited. And I feel it's even more important to maximize those benefits. Shirley, what else is coming up for you when you think about the online participation? Well, um, I mean, since I've also worked on Gather, I mean, I think, and this is my perspective, of course, it may be not shared by others, but the ability to kind of be playful <laughs> um, on the platform is fun. I, I, I feel like it is. Um, to kind of discover the affordances of these different platforms. For example, when I came in, I said, oh, look, there are those dogs. There are these pet dogs <clears throat> wagging their tails or whatever. And I don't know, I just, uh, there's this possibility of kind of enlivening um, the digital you know, space here, which is fun, it's exciting, and kind of an outlet for creativity, though, you know, you don't want that to get in the way of people's participation. You know, are we going to, is it too much, too much bandwidth, compute required, that sort of thing. So it's just a new, it's a new space to explore. 
Absolutely. And building on Shirley's wonderful last comment about, you know, how we feel about going online. This is part of the reason why Daniel emphasized at the very beginning about the schedule. We do have a packed agenda and getting you excited, but we made it very clear that you haven't heard the word requirement. And that was very intentional because we understand everyone is looking at their computer screen. You probably need a break. You probably need to go to sleep. <laughs> and so participate in the way that you feel most engaged and when you can. But most importantly, please look out for yourself throughout the time because I know conversations could get very exciting. You might want to stay up a little bit. You might be you know, excited to engage. But if you feel like, you know what, you really need to take that rest or step out for a little bit, that's okay. Uh, we're here. We're going to still continue to support you. And so look out for that and monitor because how you feel and how your energy is, is absolutely important. Um, Daniel, I see. And then after that, I would love to check in with Tim as well. Daniel. Yeah, there's a lot to say and explore together, but sometimes setting the, the baseline expectation of realizing that a connection is only possible through this technology allows us to really respect and work through the lag or through the reloading that might have to happen. Um, and then also, it is really different to engage synchronously in community. This isn't 250 likes on a video or 100 comments in a thread, like an asynchronous trace of a much larger swarm of people. This is like the quality that matters. And so I think there's something really special about how people being able to have their physical setup, hopefully in the way that they have designed it and feel ergonomically comfortable, allows us to really check in and start to learn and work towards teams and like open our minds together. I think that's very unique. And again, I think you're all hearing the theme of take advantage of the uniqueness of what complexity we can provide, um, the space, the structure, uh, the flexibility, as well as the challenges. Uh, there's something unique and we're so glad you are here. And I hope this is already inspiring you, no matter how you're participating and what to try and even tools and skills to bring back to wherever you work and where you live and whatever you do because I know you care a lot which is why you're taking out of your busy weekend to show up to commit to something like this and be part uh Tim curious to hear your thoughts what's coming up for you when you think about online facilitation and participation to make it more meaningful I think the biggest thing that comes up for me is how it is an invitation for deeper investment by the facilitator because everyone there hasn't made a physical investment to be in the space so you have to be more theatrical like, and and likewise it, it it requires and that's that's an opportunity it's also a challenge but it requires an extra level of engagement and uh, theatricality and that's kind of cool um, we can all pretend to be little actors and actresses on the screen uh, just in terms of how invested we are in emotions and all that jazz so I think that's part of it Love that. Thank you for sharing it. And what Tim highlights is so key because, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's energy, right? So one tip I, I share often in my facilitation training is I to be energetic in the way I am. Like I literally take a nap before big events. So I want to make sure I really recharge. I have some snack. I like unplug for a little bit because I don't want to fake my energy. Like I really want to genuinely be excited to be here. And for me to do that, then I need to then prioritize how I prepare and manage that energy. And so for some of you, whatever that means and how you want to show up, be mindful of that, right? Like you're looking for that weekend. Hopefully you'd feel like you're not running after work and feeling burned out and tired of making, you know, work decisions and jumping right in. We're going to feel a little tired in that case. Huh? Daniel. I think it goes really well with complexity. Complexity can feel like a total ocean. And learning complexity or trying to approach from an application's perspective, like some of these complex problems can feel like boiling the ocean. And then that allows for a, a real refocusing on if I learn one idea that changes my life, then that will have been the right idea. That will have been the phase transition today. One isn't going to become the library and memorize every topic 
have read every complexity book, which is just an open-ended, um, kind of permeable set of topics. And so I think actually complexity can seem quite overwhelming and like it's going to entail all of these terms and people and ideas and tools, but then especially in the relationships and the teams, actually it's the few that will individually count. And then in the community, we each take a different perspective on complexity. And so we're facilitating our own complexity journey. So keep an open mindset. There's so much to learn and so much to explore on building on that. I also see Felix here. Is there anything that you would like to add as well? I'm curious to hear your thoughts and what's coming up for you. I don't know if you're able to unmute and speak. Let's see, if Felix is there. I'll give one second in case. Yes, you're unmuted, please, Felix. Oh, please. Hello. Hi, good evening from here. Hello, good evening. We'll be curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. Sorry, my um, internet is a bit unstable. Uh, and then that, that accounts for the in and out. Oh, good. We're glad you're here. So when you think about online facilitation, what's coming up for you and how do we make space more intentional? Um, so I, I think uh, it is also environmental based. Um, it depends on the class of persons, the uh, activities and um, uh, economic uh, and social background. So we are looking at something that will cut, cut across uh, value chains in um, uh, growing cities in Africa. Um, so I, I look forward to studying this more to see how we can relate it to um, what we do and uh, our plans to expand uh, and, then, and, then, and then play global. Love that. Thank you very much for sharing that, right? You're hitting again on some of the key opportunities where, you know, us being virtual, one of the things is we can participate from no matter where we are, as long as we can kind of look out for the different time zones. And so I appreciate you sharing that on the learning as well as opening and the questions that we continue to raise. And so we're so glad you're here and looking forward to diving in together. And I believe with that, believe it or not, we are almost at the end. And so as we think about this, we've already, already chatted about the next question, which is, you know, what does it mean to facilitate from your unit complexity perspective? We kind of already touched upon this quite a bit, but just to highlight again, the reminder that we all come from different backgrounds and perspectives. Now, some... Uh, relatable for others, some less so. But the key is that all of our perspectives uniquely matter. And I hope that as many have emphasized that you walk away with new perspectives, right? If I walk out of this whole program uh, and whole, uh, you know, community event as the same person, I, I think it's a lost opportunity. I hope that I'm challenged, right? Like I hope I get to meet some new perspective people who's going to push me to think differently about something new that I completely you know, was blindsided. And so be open, that means, but also courageous to share and listen, because at times that might mean that some of our base, biggest assumptions might need to be flipped. And that's going to be a lot of courage. And so continue yeah. to be on the lookout uh, and be mindful of it. Uh, and so with that being said, I think we are ready to continue to build on that. So if you go to the next page, you know, when you think about facilitation, look out to align your strengths, right? Everyone's going to be a different type of facilitator, whether as a participant or as the facilitator in the sessions. Look out for your energy and time management. Think about what when you're actually on versus off. Um, communicate expectation. Uh, given that everyone is going to be in different time zones and different capacities, as you're working with the team, just take a moment to say, hey, I'm going to be offline for a few hours if you need to be, or this is how you can reach me, or I'm going to be unavailable then and then, or this is when I can be back. 
just so that, you know, there's no hanging uh, and, you know, left alone for one another. So share those norms, set those expectations and contribution, which makes a difference. And of course, throughout all of this, active listening, right? Listen better to facilitate safety. And as you form the teams, just, you know, be open to know that this best strong team isn't led by just one person, but it's matched by different people with different expertise. And so I hope that this time has been fruitful. I am so grateful for all of you for joining, whether live or virtual, uh, live or on the recording later. And I'll put some few seconds to address any other questions. Uh, Daniel, let me first pulse check with you. Anything that comes up for you that we should highlight before I wrap up? Uh, Tim first, and then I'll share something. Oh, yes, please. Just a quick question. I know I jumped into this a little bit late. This is an interesting format of questions and sticky notes as your slide deck, and then gathering with each uh, cover, with each like group more sticky notes on what you might be missing. Is that kind of how you structure your facilitations? Oh, for me on personally? Video? Yeah, because that's an yeah. interesting idea. It's like, this is everything I know. What am I missing? Oh, well, this is Jamboard, which is one of the platforms I fell in yeah. love during the pandemic because I love that, like, because I, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, I miss doing the co-creation space. And it's a little hard to have a static slide where I'm like, what are your opinions? And like crickets. Right. <laughs> um, totally. And so I, I fell in love with this platform. So it is one of the platforms I do enjoy using. But the truth is um, the Jamboard um the con side is that there is, uh, if you have more than like 10 or 15 people, it could start to crash. So then okay. I find other ways to engage that participatory, either through the chat functions or the um, breakout sessions or having live Google documents or other platforms, but some kind of digital platform where people can live share if they permits a critical mass is a really fun way to feel that interactiveness as well as feeling the flow is heading. Because uh, part of one thing that I feel is missing online, when thing went online is feeling like I can be an active participator. And this is where something like this can be a really powerful tool. So I'm glad mm -hmm. you caught that, Tim. Yeah. Yeah, look, yeah. I'm sad to hear it crashes at 10 to 15 because I'm like, yeah, it's, I love the tool as well. I haven't gotten to that limit yet. Try also Miro. Miro is the one then when I have more than 15 plus, uh, but the only thing is it's a paid platform. Ha but happy to share more tips and thoughts if you have other questions, but those are the two that I go back and forth. Okay. For Thank you. Yeah, um, great question. On that note, um, actually we plan to use a Jamboard for the slides that we'll be walking through and collaborating on like over the weekend. And it, it kind of goes broad and deep because it allows us to hear multiple perspectives at once and make it really accessible and re-watchable and like re-interactable for somebody who's not quite there in the moment. So it has a feeling of like a conversation that's captured and continuing through time, which is a lot of how these conversations are. Um... Awesome. Thank you. Daniel, yes. Oh, Tim, yeah. did you want more? Tim, yeah, go ahead. Just forgot to lower my hand. Perfect. Oh. Thanks for double checking. The hand function works. <laughs> um, We can talk about anything else, or I can just share the next steps. Is that good? Perfect. Let me pause check in. Is there any other questions or final thoughts in the group? Only final thought. Okay. Thank you so much, Monica. Nice to meet you. Good to meet everybody else. I do have to run. Take care. Awesome. Well, Thank Eric. you so much. Thanks for joining us. So great having you. So, so just I think we some... can wrap up so that way we have on the recording. Yes, please. Excellent. Um, feel free to let anyone know that they're more than welcome to still register to participate. Uh, the same way that you registered to participate. You can help them through as well during the pre-weekend join any of the activities that you are excited by and available for and watch the pre-weekend playlist which has facilitator introductions set aside time for the weekend however that's looking for you and keep an open mind 
however you're interested to become involved in Complexity Weekend. So um, I will, if anyone else has any final thoughts, otherwise we can close the recording. All right, thank you everybody for this and thanks Monica for being such a supporter of CW. Thank you very much all for joining and excited for you to join this community. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much for the opportunity. Thank you again. Bye.